Okay, everyone, welcome to the Analog Toys live stream. And I'm very pleased today to be joined by Bobby Valor. Um, would I be right in saying the owner and designer of the new Action Force brand? Yeah, that sounds pretty accurate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Bobby, why don't you introduce yourself to the audience? Maybe tell us a little bit about um, Valorverse Action Force. Sure, sure. Um, uh, before I get into that, uh, I just want to thank you for having me on. Uh, if this oh, is my pleasure. Uh, an absolute honor for me to come on your show. Um, you know, I've listened to your your channel for quite a while now because it's so action force focused. So it's like I always wanted to talk to you and come on. And, uh, you know, so this is like kind of surreal for me. So thank you for having me on. And thank you to everyone, you know, listening right now. Hope you guys uh, enjoy the show. Ah, no, you're, you're very welcome, Bobby. Very welcome. And thanks to uh, thanks to Michael French for putting us in touch, I suppose. Definitely. Thank you, Michael. Hope you're listening. Um, yeah. yeah, so I guess kind of getting into it a bit. Um, a lot of people know me from my time at Hasbro. I'd spent, you know, about almost seven years at Hasbro working on many brands. Most of the time spent on Marvel. And I, I you know, I had some some time on G.I. Joe as well. Worked on some really great G.I. Joe items. Did some stuff for the club as well while I was on the Joe brand at Hasbro. And then when I left Hasbro in 2018, I decided to form my own company and created the Action Force line. So that all happened at the very beginning of 2019. So it's been, you know, two years now uh, that that I've been kind of working on this. And uh, it, it's been great. Uh, I love every second of it. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a blast. Um, it was a shame to leave Hasbro, but, uh, you know, everyone that leaves Hasbro kind of moves on to, to better things. And, you know, I, I'm a perfect example of that and, you know, it's, it's been great. So that would, yeah, and kind of in a I, nutshell. And in my personal opinion, you couldn't really have picked up a, a, a more iconic brand name. Like how, how did, um, how did how did how were you fortunate enough to get hold of the the rights to the name Action Force? So I'm trying to remember. I know some people have asked me this before, and I wish I could remember exactly the the time that I decided to go after it. But uh, a really good friend of mine, Daryl the Priest, who was a the brand manager um, at Hasbro uh, for Star Wars and GI Joe, he's kind of like you know one of the Godfathers of GI Joe. We're really good friends, and we both got laid off from Hasbro on the same day. So, you know, we kind of had this, this free time. So we would always have lunch every week or a couple of times a week. And, you know, he, he kept like, kind of, you know, asking me like, what, what are you going to do? And this and that. And he kept kind of pushing me like, you know, you should, you should do your own thing. Like other people have done their own thing that left Hasbro. And I told him I was kind of nervous. I didn't, you know, uh, I feel like that was, that was a, a big move to kind of, you know, start your own toy line. It's like, I, yeah, I've designed and managed toy brands before, but to, to run the whole thing that that's that's very nerve-wracking and then to be responsible for hundreds of thousands of dollars I was like that's pretty nervous to even just think about yeah. and you know I kind of said to him when we were at Hasbro together uh, and I was on GI Joe and he was on GI Joe we were developing a six inch line uh, very different from what you got with classified but we were doing a, basically a six inch legends yeah, yeah, Joe line. It was very much like Pursuit of Cobra, more realistic. And we were just about to go to tooling and they canceled the line because they canceled the third movie. And so after, you know, we got laid off, you know, I, I kind of said to him, I, I said, you know, Hasbro is eventually going to do a six inch line, but they're not going to announce it for a very long time. And I said, uh, you know, right now the market has a gap in it for six inch military. And I felt like if if I was going to do something, I would want to do something like that because I felt like Hasbro not doing anything with GI Joe and not giving it the love it deserves was kind of a travesty to me. And, you know, I, I love that line that we worked on. So I said, okay, well maybe I can get a jump on doing, you know, six inch military and then Hasbro will show, you know, GI Joe, you know, later on and it'll kind of get the ball rolling. So I, you know, started to kind of come up with this idea of, of, what I wanted to do for the line because I didn't want it to just be like customized, customizable figures. like kind of like what Marauder task force does. I wanted it to be an IP. I wanted it to have character and story and be something that could evolve and expand and live on for a really long time. So 
while coming up with, you know, characters and, and sketching and things like that and coming up with a story, you know, another session with Daryl at lunch, he, he, I think he kind of like alluded to me like, Hey, you know, I was responsible for, you know, securing trademarks and renewing them and that, that sort of thing. He goes, you know, there's, there might be some, some good, you know, names out there that, you know, are available. And, you know, I think that's kind of how it started. And, then I, you know, it's easy to look up trademarks uh, on the on the U.S. the trademark site, and I just started like researching stuff. And Action Force was one of the names I looked up, and I saw that Hasbro had abandoned it in 2005. Now they hadn't done anything with ye- with it years before that even. And then 2005, they officially let it go abandoned, and it was registered as such. And then it just kind of just laid dead. And, you know, Daryl said, we'd never had any plans to ever do anything with Action Force related like ever. Um, So I said, well, that that's kind of a shame because, you know, Action Force is this amazing brand with this rich history and the name is so iconic. And I felt like, you know, it, it should live on. Like and I knew that I couldn't, you know, bring back in characters like Baron Iron Blood, but I felt like, well, what if I I brought, you know, created this new action force and rebooted it with new characters and that sort of thing. And I felt like if Hasbro were to do anything with action force, that's probably what they would have done. They probably would have rebooted it with new characters and a new story if they decided to go that way. So I felt like, okay, well, I think I can kind of, kind of do this. And, you know, there was part of me that was like, okay, well, how are people going to feel? Because, you know, are they going to think, well, I'm kind of stealing this name, but at the same time, you know, when I first introduced it as, as that, I think a, a lot of people were skeptical and they're like, wait a second, you're just stealing this name. But as they heard the story, like, listen, Hasbro abandoned it first. And then I'm the one that, that revived it because I wanted it to live on. Then, you know, more people start understood that and kind of like, oh, okay, that's, that's great that you're doing that. Otherwise we would have never had action force ever again. So that's how it happened. I registered for the the trademark and I, you know, I, per- I purchased it and, you know, Hasbro's aware of it because they get notified of, you know, any trademarks that get applied for and they didn't uh, uh, contest it. And at the same time that I applied for the Action Force trademark, I also applied for Steel Brigade, which is my all time favorite G.I. Joe ever. <laughs> um, um, I have over a hundred and I think I'm over 130 steel brigade figures at this point right now. Um, I, I just, I love the, the figure. It was, it was great. So I was like, well, if I'm going to do my own, uh, military line and call it action force, wouldn't it be cool to just do my own steel brigade while I'm at it? So I ended up purchasing the trademark for steel brigade and creating a new steel brigade character. And then that's kind of the ball just got rolling from there and, you know, created the characters and the, the story and it's just been ever evolving since then. And then, you know, got to work on designing the characters and kicking off sculpting and getting the, the figures actually sculpted and models made and that sort of thing. And two Kickstarters later and, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah. So was it always your, your intention to have a, a, a comic go along with this? Yeah. Yeah. I wanted it to, you know, I, I know, I know it, it seems very much like, I'm basically just doing a rip off GI Joe line. And I I totally get that. And I I see where people can, can say that, but the way I see it is GI Joe paved the way guys like Kirk Bazigian, they, they had this game plan and they said, this is the way we're going to do this. And it worked. They, they created a toy line. They created a comic and then followed suit with animation. And it just all snowballed into this great brand. And I said, there's nothing wrong with that that way of doing things. So why not just mo- like model it after that? So I looked at like, well, how am I going to get the story out there? Because I want to keep the story going. And I, as the, the figures are being uh, produced in China, I want there to be content for people to have while they're waiting for their figures. And I want people to learn about these characters. So I came from the comic book industry. I, I you know... I went to school for drawing comic books and never really broke into the business, but it was always like, you know, a passion of mine. So I thought, well, a comic is, is perfect. And, you know, got, you know, a great writer, uh, Bill Nidro. He is a, a fantastic writer, got him on board. I met him at uh, Joe con, the last Joe con. And, you know, he knew what I was uh, kind of doing and he was like, Hey, I want to, you know, if you need any help with anything. So it was great to, 
get him on board and he's come up with, you know, he's taken the story that I give this loose story that I've given him and has just ran with it and created this rich content. And I've gotten some great uh, talented artists on board and, you know, Robert Atkins doing covers and the comic has been going great. And the, the first two issues were out and I just sent uh, the first two issues back to print along with issue three and issue four. I managed to get issue four to the printer this week so Excellent. that later this month, all four issues will be on uh, up for sale on the Valiverse store, which is yeah. great because the issue well, four is a just whole. While what was that? Just while we're speaking of that, Bobby, I'm going yeah. to uh, I'm going to quickly share screen. Oh yeah, yeah. Just so you guys know, so so if you go to the to the Valiverse website, it's just valiverse.com, um, and then you click on the tab on the bottom for. For comics and it'll show you on there so uh, yeah issue one two and and uh, one and two are available now with um issues three and four obviously coming yep. soon yep so you'll have a lot of content uh to get uh, later this month and it's uh, it's great that i'm able to get the four issues available because then you know people don't have to spend extra on shipping say when issue four comes out they can kind of get it all in bulk uh you know with just one one flat rate shipping charge and you know they'll have four issues of content to read. So issue one and two, uh, we're out. Issue three is about Steel Brigade and this other character, uh, Eclipse. And then issue four is a whole full issue based on Sergeant Slaughter. Uh, it's it's kind of awesome. the, the, the Sergeant Slaughter story for this new action force. So it's, it's really great to get that issue out. It came out fantastic. The art, the story, everything about it is fantastic. I got a great colorist, letter guy. Um, the, I, I couldn't be happier with the issues. Issue five is currently being drawn, so that's really exciting. I just wrote issue six. Bill is hard at work on issue six slash seven. We don't know if my issue is going to be six or seven or his is going to be six or seven. Uh, waiting on a couple of things to work out. But uh, it, it's great doing the comics because, it, you know, I, I, we get to really dive into these these characters and you know, it gets people really excited. And I, I read all the comments uh, online and see pe what people say about characters they're waiting for and that sort of thing. So it's it, it's great. And then once the figures get delivered, then it's just going to be this whole just action force in your face. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited to see action force comics again because I've, I've told this story many times on the channel. I, I, was, I, I read comic books like every kid but did back in the 80s. Um, mm. But there was never any particular comic that I was almost um, almost addicted to, so to speak. Um, gotcha. Until 1987, when Action Force, when I first saw Action Force Weekly, I believe it was um, advertised on TV. I'd picked up one of the action figures. So, so what had happened in the UK? We had like four. We had four years of Palatoy's Action Force, and then. It went away in 1985. There was nothing around in 86. I think in 86, I was probably playing with 18 toys or something like that. And then in 1987, Action Force, what they called in International Heroes, mm -hmm. um, came back into toy stores, and it was just a rebranded Hasbro G.I. Joe line. And the original line had characters like Barbecue, Flint, Lady J, mm -hmm. that, that kind of thing. So although they'd come out in the U.S. about two years prior, that's what we got in 87 in the U.K. And I remember seeing them in a toy store for the first time. And because the card art was so different, it was the G.I. Joe card art, but with the Action Force. Yeah. Um, and, and the Action Force logo was different. I never knew that there was any connection between that and the original Palatoy stuff because it had been gone yeah. for a year. Then all of a sudden this comic comes out. And I, uh, my, the, I remember the first issue came double packed with issue two, and it was advertised on TV. My parents bought it for me, and then they actually got a subscription where every single week it would get delivered on a Saturday morning with my dad's newspaper. Um, and it ran, it ran for fifty issues throughout nineteen eighty seven. Um, and it was the, it's the one comic from my childhood that I read religiously. I would each week I'd get the new comic and I would read it five six times. So I'm really excited to see. An action force comic back out again. Um, awesome. Just just before we kick on, um, I'm just going to go back through the chat. So, sure. Um, sure. Michael from yeah, Retro Blasting is uh, Michael French in the house. Yeah, and he's very kindly sent uh, sent us a super chat. He said there's no chat read necessary, but I always like to give Michael a shout out. 
Uh, and we've got a question here from Judson Osgood. Um, make sure to ask Bobby if he plans to do any vehicles. <laughs> He's just kind of busting me. Uh, Judson listens to uh, a lot of the podcasts I'm on, but he know he knows uh, how to. That, that's a good rib because um, I get asked about vehicles literally every podcast I'm, I'm ever on. So I feel like I've I've answered it probably about 50, 60 times. Um, so he's just kind of throwing me under the bus there. Uh, <laughs> one day, Judd, one day. One day. One uh, you day. know, um, uh, so I, I asked the patrons of the channel the other day, um, or just, just yesterday, actually, if um, if they had any questions for you. And um, we've got about four questions or so, maybe five questions here. So I'll, I'll ask them sporadically as we go. Sounds good. Um, but... Linking in with that whole vehicles thing, um, Mark Lennon um, says, are we going to see a modern interpretation of RoboSkull? <laughs> <laughs> Setting uh, the bar pretty high. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's listen, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a tough bar to, to, to get to. Um, I mean, listen, RoboSkull is, is one of those things where it's, one of the most obscure and iconic vehicles like ever made, like just across toys in general. Um, you know, so uh, I've watched your video, other people's videos on the Robo Skull, and it, you know, I don't have one personally. Um, I've came close to buying one at cons. It's just one of those things where it's it's just so cool, and I feel like I don't I, I don't know if I'd ever want to tread that close to it because I, I feel like that it was done so well. And, you know, um, uh, Bob was the designer on that one, right? Did yes, he design it? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's like, I kind of wouldn't want to want to really tread on, on such a great design. Um, you know, I say that now, but who knows? Maybe, maybe if I ever get to vehicles and maybe I can find a way to do so, like, you know, uh, do an homage to the Robo Skull, maybe. But uh, I'd be a little afraid to right now just because, you know, of, of the, <laughs> the history that that vehicle has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I just want to do a shout out to Brian Dillingham, sent us a super chat, and he's uh, sent me $2 towards my Black Series habit. Um, <laughs> I somehow accidentally started collecting Star Wars Black Series uh, last year. So I was, was never, a modern, never a modern collector before that. Mm. So um, we've got another super chat here from uh, Iron Eyehead. He says, hey, guys, love the show, Tony. Bobby's pretty good at drawing comics. Don't let him tell you any different. <laughs> so this, this individual, this is Alex Sanchez. Alex was on our podcast uh, a couple weeks ago. Alex and I went to art school together. Uh, Alex is a fantastic comic book illustrator. And Alex actually did the Steel Brigade uh, story that is in issue three. So he did some fantastic art for me. And a great friend of mine, uh, he's a way better artist than me, though. So. <laughs> I say I think most of the best artists around Bobby are actually quite um, modest. <laughs> Should I I, say? You know, you know, it was kind of one of those things where I, I think when I went to school, I was too, I was really I was young. Uh, Alex was older than me, more mature. I went there. I was just young and cocky and stupid. And I I wish I had applied myself a little a little more. I I didn't start really applying myself until after I got out of school, and then I realized how hard it was to get into the comic book industry. But, you know, it's also one of those things where I, I wish I drew more. Like, I, I've done a couple of the covers for the Action Force comics, which has been great to actually, like, sit down and draw. And I, I draw the designs for all the figures. But there are times where I'll see Alex's work. I'm like, man, it'd be really cool to draw comics now. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm always envious of, of the guys that get to draw comics. Maybe one day yeah. I'll find the time and I'll actually do one of my own Action Force issues. Yeah. Uh, we got a you know, a pretty good question here from Raul. He says, "Will the figures still be available for purchase after all the pre-orders are fulfilled?" Yes. So the 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 pre-orders are still going on right now, but I've ordered extra quantities of all of Series One, so that when uh, eventually I'm going to shut down the pre-orders just to gear up for when the you know the factory has all the samples leave and as it gets here, and then we'll have to go through everything and then fulfill all the orders but as soon as we're done fulfilling all the orders for the kickstarter and then all the the, the post pre-orders all that extra product is going up on 
the Valiverse site for sale. So there's going to be all, every item for Series One will be available uh, as well. So if you if you missed the the Kickstarter or don't have the funds or something like that, don't worry. There will be product available. Uh, you know, hopefully there's enough that that it lasts. If it sells out, that's great. But um, you know, I, I've made sure to, to order a lot extra because uh, I know you know we're in a time right now where getting the product you want is kind of hard. So I don't, I don't want that to happen to people. I want to make sure everyone gets the product they're looking for. So there will be uh, quantities of all of series one available uh, after the, the pre-orders are fulfilled. Yeah. That's uh that's excellent to hear that. Cause yeah, <laughs> well, a lot of stuff is getting harder and harder. It's, it's almost like modern toys are getting harder to get the rare vintage stuff. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, so we've got a question here from laser pants. He's asking Bobby, if you're, uh, if there are any other podcasts you might be on. Yeah, I'm on this Rinky Dink podcast on uh, on Friday nights here uh, at 8 p.m. called The Infinity Equation. Uh, I'm on there with three other great guys. We have a lot of fun ranting about toys and shooting the, the S a bit. Uh, Ryan yeah. is, is one of those hosts, and he's become a good friend. So uh, I'm not, I don't really want to plug the, the show too hard on your show, but you know it's, it's a fun show if you guys want to tune in. Uh, by all means, pl plug away, Bobby. We, uh, I'm, I'm here to help promote promote Valiverse because I'm, I'm, I'm getting, ex I'm getting very excited about what I'm, what I'm seeing. So, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share another page here now. That's so cool to hear. Like, guys, I'm gonna take a second to like stop for a second because I'm gonna like be like, I'm gonna be like a giddy fanboy for a second here. The fact that Tony is telling me that he's excited for my line is like. That's like that's what I like aspired this line to. I'm like I just have to get to the point where where Tony buys off on the line. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I've yeah I've, so I've I've read the I've read the first comic. I've got uh, I haven't had a chance to read the the second one yet. I'm I'm loving that, but um I'm just gonna yeah I'm gonna share a screen now. Yeah. I'll make sure because. you get three and four too. I'll send you the digitals because I know getting it over there to Australia takes a while. Uh, I'm going to be um, I'm, I'm going to be ordering. I want uh, I want physical copies as well. So I'll make sure you like an order. But um, yeah, so I just want to show some of the audience who who perhaps haven't seen this before. Yeah, uh, these are some of the core figures that are available um, for the Valiverse Action Force line. Um, obviously, Steel Brigade, which you already mentioned. Um, yeah. Yeah. My personal favorite, Condor, who's the uh, the British captain of the Action Force. Uh, I love yeah, the fact that he's got the, the yeah, Union flag on his body armor. He's my, I wanted a throwback to the vintage line and, you know, the SAS was sort of my favorite from the, the vintage line. So I wanted an, an SAS character in the line, but it was, it was kind of like, okay, well, how am I going to do that? Because it's, it's a, it's a U.S. based story. So how am I going to bring in, in, in this, this, uh, you know, this English character. So Condor was basically a liaison over in the United States from Great Britain, he's an, an SAS operative, but he's over here as a liaison, help training troops. And then the whole thing goes down, uh, you know, with the story where the whole country sort of, sort of gets divided and splits up. And he feels that he should be there kind of helping them get through this. And he's sort of an integral part of bringing all the, 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 the characters of the Action Force team together. So he's basically like their leader. So him, him being, you know, a, a British a SAS operative, over here in the U.S. is my throwback to the to the vintage line. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's, well, while we've got the while we've got the screen up here, do you want to talk us through? Um, uh, I think well, I think we'll leave the, the sergeant slaughter a bit for for a moment because I know some people are going to have some questions. Um, yeah. But let's talk about um, you know Bone Collector and the Swarm yep. Trooper and the others. Yep. So so Bone Collector was uh, a, I think Bone Collector was the first character I ever created for the line. I just I wanted this this cool, uh, just badass sort of just mercenary. You know, it's it's. I think you nailed that, Bobby. You know. I think you've nailed that as well. Yeah. So and and the kind of the inspiration I got from him is like one of my favorite movies is Willow, and General Kale is the villain of the movie. He kind of wears like this weird horse skull mask. Uh, yeah. And I, was like, I was like, man, if I were ever going into battle, I would go into battle with a skull mask on because how intimidating <laughs> is that? And I want him like. It's got to be an intimidating skull mask. And I see like a lot of, you know, military helmets. They have this quasi tech looking skull face. I'm like, I want this real skull. So I started doing research on saber tooth cats and things like that. And sort of made this hybrid human saber tooth cat skull face. And he, 
he became just this this really menacing character and you know i just started running with it so he he's he's a badass mercenary um karak is the leader of the garrison who's one of the the factions that's that's you know in in the country as as the country sort of divides he's this ex military guy very conflicted he you know you you like to think of him as as the villain but as you start to read the comics you'll realize there's a lot a lot a lot of layers to him and he's not exactly what he seems in in a way um, i don't want to give too much away but he's a very deep character very very cool character uh, the swarm are these operatives that are basically think of like uh, in RoboCop. You had OCP, which was like this third-party security faction. That's what the swarm uh, is. They're they're a third-party corporate-run security force that sort of comes in and is trying to tell people like, "Hey, we're the good guys. We're we're going to help with you know with the transition with the divide." And then it turns out they're just actually menacing. Uh, you know, mercenaries themselves. And you see that in, in issue one and in, in the issues of the, the moving forward. So, um, you know, uh, those are the core figures. And of course, obviously Sergeant Slaughter, uh, which, you know, needs no introduction really. Yeah, yeah. Um, those are the, the six core figures for series one. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy with the, with those figures. I feel like it's, it's a nice round out of core characters, uh, unique characters, troop builders, that sort of thing. Yeah. So we've got a question here from Zach. He's asking yep. when uh, issue three of the comic is going to be available for order on the website. Yeah. So I just sent the files to the printer this week. I believe it only takes them a week to print and a couple days to ship. I think it's a really fast turnaround. So I should have them uh, in, you know, maybe a couple weeks. And then I just need to get everything ready. Uh, I got to get the boxes ready because I know that once they go up on the site, there's going to be this, this influx of orders coming in. I want to make sure that I get them all, uh, fulfilled because I know some people are going to want signed comics and that sort of thing. So uh, definitely before the end of the month, uh, they will be up for sale. And I believe there is another surprise item coming uh, that will be up for sale in store uh, this month as well. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed that it, it gets here in time. But, uh, you know, yeah, I've been kind of teasing it here and there, but it's it's something big, it's something you guys are going to like. So uh, stay tuned for that. Awesome. Awesome. All right, we got uh, we got another question for the page uh, from the patrons here. So, so one of the questions was has already been answered about the vehicles. Um, let's go with. Uh, so, we've got a question here from my buddy Gojatron. Um, are there any plans to add any more known faces to the line beyond Sergeant Slaughter? Um, yes and no. Uh, bringing in Sergeant Slaughter was kind of one of those things that just sort of came together and you know I, I i wasn't like trying to do it uh that that i think was another daryl uh move where he was like hey well you should try to get sergeant slaughter yeah. um and i didn't think that that would have ever been possible and then it just it, all the stars aligned and we got him in the line and he's very excited to be in the line so that that really worked out sarge was like that that piece of the puzzle that came in and escalated the line from a small sort of niche boutique line to this mainstream line that like has gotten all this attention. And I've had wrestlers reach out to me like, Hey, when are you going to do my figure? That sort of thing. So it was like crazy that, that all these eyes are on it now uh, because Sarge came in and immediately people started asking me, Hey, you know, who's the next celebrity you're going to do? Are you going to get the fridge? Are you, you know, who are you going to get? Um, <laughs> I don't know if it was necessary, kind of something that I, I felt, should be done as far as having a celebrity in the line all the time. Uh, I'm not going to say that I'm not working on anything. I'm always working on something. So there yeah. may be something in the works, uh, but it also has to be right for the line. Like whoever I bring in, if I do bring in someone, it, it's going to fit well with the story and the characters and where I'm taking it. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Um, but you know, I'm not going to try to get the fridge, uh, or, or anything like that but um you never know but i'm, I'm sure i'm working on something yeah. i think uh king eric the greatest of all is uh having a bit of fun with us here he's asking if you're gonna have a board game packed in with an exclusive figure <laughs> we all know what he's talking about well what i have to do is we have to we have to let the line come out then we have to let the line die for a few years 
and then we have to bring the line back, <laughs> and then we'll bring out the game for you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, all right, we've also we've got a super chat here from my buddy Salvador at Two Cents Toys. I want to give Sal a shout out as well. He's got an excellent uh, YouTube channel called Two Cents Toys. Does lots of reviews of. Uh, uh, modern action figures. He particularly likes the six-inch scale, so the Black Series, that kind of thing. So I love seeing so many great people in one place. Analog toys, retro blasting, laser pants, scuba peak, Tim Hayes, George Aitken, Chris Miwa, and anyone else I miss. Such a wonderful company to keep. Keep up the, the awesome work, Tony, and everyone. And Kraken, question mark. So I've got the Kraken here. Yep, yep. Um, um, I... Um, I had an idea, Bobby, which I don't know if I want to say on here in case anyone else tries to steal it. Okay. Because um, I know um, what maybe people don't understand is when you uh, purchase the rights to the Action Force name, you just get the, that name. You don't yep. get the rights yep. to uh, Baron Iron Blood and all these other things. Yeah. yeah. So you would have to purchase the rights to Kraken, I'm assuming? Yeah. The, yeah. Um, tech, I mean, Kraken's one of those names where – because it's in Greek mythology, I think it's public domain, so you don't have yeah. to technically trademark that name. Uh, I'd have to do a little digging and ask my my trademark attorney. Um, but yeah, for for anyone that that's uh, curious, just to give you a quick lesson, trademarks secure the name of something. Copyright uh, covers the design of something. Now, trademarks can expire, and you have to renew them. Copyrights last forever. So, and you also don't have to technically apply for a copyright. So my characters that I drew and I, I can show proof of when I started them and, and, you know, all, all that, um, sort of proof on, on the design of the character that's protected by copyright, whether I submit it to the copyright office or not, because I created that work and it's always protected. So yeah, I couldn't do, uh, basically, um, you know, yeah, Kraken figure and call him Kraken and have it be the same design because Hasbro, because they technically own that design, I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, you know, I, I've obviously I've looked over the the vintage line and and saw where I could pay homage to to stuff and do little throwbacks and that sort of thing. Kraken's one of those characters; he's so obscure. It's like, well, where do you put him? Um, so you know, may, maybe maybe down the line, I'll, I'll throw a little little tease or, or throwback to, to Kraken. Cause there's so many yeah. other good characters that, you know, I have to, you know, uh, you know, sort of pay respect to in a way. <laughs> well, uh, Kraken may be a bit obscure, but I mean, what the hell would you do with Mouton? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you could probably do a modern interpretation of him, you know, in his cool looking helmet, his deep sea diver helmet. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all right, we've got another super chat here from Brian Dillingham. Thanks for the super chat. He says, uh, are your army builders capable of different looks like the, um, so you know, the, the Hoth Rebel Trooper that yeah. they brought out that had yeah. an alternate face? Um, yes. So in, in a way, um, the so there's the core figures that I have, and then um, there's also basic troopers that are a, a lower price point, and they come with, uh, they don't come with any weapons. They come with extra hands and a stand, but they also have... Uh, an alternate head. So there's a Caucasian head and an African American head. So if you want to just make different troopers with the basic troopers, you can do that. That's sort of the extent of, of what he's asking about the rebel trooper. I mean, across the line, all of the, the ball joints for the heads are all the same size. So anyone's heads uh, can be switched with any figure, same thing with the hands. And there's also all, a lot of the other parts of the figure are swappable as well. So there's a lot of customization opportunities for it. If you want to make your own characters, they break the torso. So basically if you want to change pants or shirts, you can do that with the characters. But yeah, all the, the basic troopers come with the, you know, the, the two different um, skin tones for the, for the head. So there's, there's that aspect of swappability. That's, and that's really good to know. I, I was recently, um, someone from the channel very kindly gifted me. So from the Star Wars Black Series line, the six-inch line, a number of years back, they did a two-pack of Hoth Luke and the Wampa. Mm -hmm. um, I was not collecting Black Series back then. So, um, yeah, uh, 
a supporter of the channel sent it to me in, in a gift box and I was going to re really excited to get the Wampa. But when you look at obviously the, the, the way that Hasbro's face printing technology has massively improved over the years, mm -hmm. you then look at this um, Hoth Luke and it's, looks really outdated compared to, to, to yeah. the other figures. So, so I went to do a, a head swap with a more up to date Luke Skywalker and I couldn't because the ball size was different. Oh, it's a shame. Um, that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm very pleased to know that all, it's all a uh, stock standard size. So yeah, that was an important aspect uh, for this line because I know there, there was a, a 12 inch legends line I worked on when I was at Hasbro and because we were starting that line fresh, I said from the start, I said the ball joints have to be the same size because, yes, you're not going to really, you know, say you can put Spider-Man's head on Captain America. But what if someone wants to do it? You should be able to give them that opportunity. So to me, when I was working on even the six inch Legends line, I was always baffled on why we just didn't have standard uh, ball sockets. So when I, I told the fact, just look, listen, one one ball size, one ball size for the females, one ball size for the male across the board. So it has to. Everything has to be swappable in, the, in in that sense because yeah, it's 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 a shame when you're like, oh, that head de is definitely going to fit. And also, a lot of times when you're changing the neck ball size, it it also changes the height so uh, of the head. So sometimes you'll put a head on a ball and it'll be super high on the on the neck, and you have to dremel it out. And that's that's pretty annoying too. So across the board, all the heads are going to fit. Uh, you know. Yeah. Excellent. So Retro Blast is asking Bobby if uh, if he can request an Aussie female sniper figure code named Kylie. <laughs> <laughs> For you, Michael, I'll put that I'll put that in my back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, we um I'll, I'll jump down now so to uh, two more questions from the from the patrons here, uh, and this question is is um something that kind of got me excited. So Scuba Pete, um, who's a who's a fantastic member of this community, very well-known guy. He said, he's pre-ordered your weapons pack, and I have to say that they're exquisite. Uh, what was your thought process for creating these accessories? I love the detail. Um, I love the detail and those removable muzzle flashes. Uh, th thank you for that compliment. Um, I That's so appreciated. Uh, the weapons... Um, I've gotten a lot of comments on the weapons because, you know, they're like, wow, your weapons are so realistic and, and the detail and that sort of thing. I think it's a, a lot of aspects came into the, to the weapons being as popular as they are. I think, you know, uh, the classified line having their sci-fi weapons kind of turned people off a little bit and people are just used to more realistic weapons. And I'm kind of a, a bit, a big firearms fan. Um, so, you know, realism in, in, you know, weapons is important to me. So I knew I was, I was doing a modern military line. It's, it's only set about, you know, four, uh, eight years in the future. So we're still going to have these, these same modern, uh, you know, military weaponry, the same, same firearms, that sort of thing. And there's so many great ones out there, you know, the scar, the grenade launcher and AK 47. So, uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that people had the opportunity to get these weapons and you know, a big aspect of why the weapons came out so good is because we molded them in ABS. Now, when you get sort of uh, classified or legends or star Wars, they mold all their weapons in PVC. And as you guys have seen, you'll pull a gun out or a blaster out and it'll be warped. Like I got a legends cable and I looked at a top version of his rifle and it went like this, like a snake, just because of the, way <laughs> it was in the, the blister. And it's, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, why, why are you doing it? Why are you doing it in, in PVC? I know for a fact you can do it in ABS. They just choose not to. Um, but I said, I told the factory, I said, every weapon has to be done in ABS because ABS is rigid and you get that really crisp detail. So I've gotten samples in from the factory. Uh, I did a, a live stream where I unboxed those samples and I'll look at them still even today. And, and the detail that they were able to get uh, you guys will see it when you get, you know, your weapons, the detail on the hand grips and just on the, 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 the body of the, of the rifle and the muzzles and, and the stocks, like everything is, is so crisp and clean. Uh, so I, I'm really happy with the way they turned out. I, I think they're, they're great weapons. They're, they're sized correctly for your, for your, your six inch figures. Um, yeah. The muzzle flashes were sort of a late addition. Um, you know, as I was doing, I'm like, 
wait a second, I saw what Mezco was doing. They do really great, you know, uh, muzzle flash effects. And I said, oh, we got to we got to do something here. And I was able to fit these these nice translucent muzzle flashes. So there's three different types. There's one that fits in pistols and two different types that fit on the rifles. Those come in the in the the, the weapons pack. So that's that's nice to get. Uh, a bunch of the rifles have removable magazines. The grenade launcher has a spinning uh, drum for where the grenades yeah. go. So there's little aspects of of the weapons that that you know have some features to them. I might do some more um, you know modular weapons uh, down the line. We'll see. Uh, the saw, the big you know um, uh, machine gun has you know the removable ammo box, a bipod. So there's some really great stuff in there. Uh, the you know. Uh, the weapons are, are probably the, the top seller uh, for the whole line, which is great. Uh, so that I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that people are really enjoying them, um, you know, but, but stay we tuned. Don't, we know why, don't we? We know why they're the top seller because everyone's <laughs> replacing them with those Nerf guns that they got with their G.I. Joe classifieds yeah. on. Yeah. But for me, being, being an ex-military guy, um, I, I, I've I've got a number of reasons why I was disappointed with with Hasbro's uh, GI Joe classifiers. Like, certainly, the first few announcements, like since then, I, I don't know if there's been changes in designers, if they're look, listening to the fans, or you know, they seem to have been improving. But those first few, like Robok and Scarlet, were just yeah. were just awful. Um, but the weapons were the, was the biggest disappointment for me. Um, and then and then seeing these like highly accurate. These these are realistic modern weapons. There's nothing uh, on that. The fact that they have painted details. Are they painted details, or is it two tone plastic? Or uh, they're painted. Yeah, yes. yeah, There's yeah. Because like every, everything you get in the classifieds line, I think it was. Um, uh, they brought out Beachhead, which a lot of people kind of thought was a pretty cool figure. I actually mm -hmm. didn't like Beachhead, but the worst part of Beachhead for me was like a, a green plastic weapon. It, yeah, it just it looked yeah. awful. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to do sci-fi weapons, like, okay, just mold them in black and let people customize them. But, yeah, when I saw those green weapons, I said, ooh, that's not going to go well. Um, but, I mean, listen, when when Classified came out, my orders for my weapons skyrocketed. So, you know, they're they're doing something wrong and I'm doing something right. So, I guess that's yeah. <laughs> so. So, the, so these were already um, – you had already had these available for pre-order before yeah. Classifieds came out. Yep. So, yeah, so you're not going into a plug a gap in, in their brand. It's just a happy coincidence. So Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Know, the weapons are important, and I get a lot of great feedback on the weapons. And I've, I've got a new sculptor on board who is doing the, the weapons for Series 2, and I'm going to start showing some of that in the next couple days, maybe next week or, or so. But uh, we've got some great weapons because, you know, because they're, they're, they're such a, a, a great seller and people want more weapons, I wanted to give more variety of weapons as we moved on from series to series. So uh, there's going to be a whole new uh, series of weapons to go along with series two, which is going to be great. So now you're just going to have an even bigger arsenal. And then I'll introduce some more for series three and then on down the line. Yeah. Cool. Look, I'm, uh, I'm going to um, just flip over now. I'm going to click on your, uh, Sergeant Slaughter. Yeah. Share the screen. So tell tell the audience how um, how it all came about. How, how did we get Sergeant Slaughter into the line? Because you said you like you weren't sort of actively looking for it. Yeah, it was like I said. I think I think you know another one of our lunches. Daryl maybe joked around about, or I maybe joked like, "Oh, it'd be cool to get Sarge or something like that." And um, uh, he might've said like, you know, reach out to him and see what happens. And, you know, a, a friend of mine was able to get me the contact information for Sarge's agent. And I contacted Sarge's agent and I, you know, I told him who I was, told him what I was doing, you know, thinking like, oh, he's not going to know what's going on. He's probably going to pass on it, this and that. And he goes, all right, well, you know, uh, send me a pitch. I'll talk to Sarge and, uh, you know, we'll see, we'll see from there. And I was like, okay, great. So I put this pitch together on, you know, what the figure would look like and how he would fit in the story. And I sent it over to him. And like a week later, he called me up. He's like, listen, Sarge loves this. Uh, let's, let's start moving forward. Let's try to work out a contract. And I'm like, wow, is this like for real? 
Um, so it was an easy process, really easy negotiations. Um, you know, they, they're him and his agent are great to work with. They're great people. And I was able to get, uh, cause you know, I had sent all, all the, the sculpting files and hard copies over to China, uh, already. So I, you know, I thought, okay, well, we're going into production. I'm not going to be able to get Sarge in, you know, he might be a series two figure, but it, it all kind of wrapped up so quickly that we we're able to get Sergeant Slaughter into series one. We were able to, to find room in the molds to put his parts, get him in there. And then I made the big announcement and added him to the line and it just kind of blew up from there. So it, it, it's amazing how, how easy it all worked out uh, yeah, yeah. now, uh, you know, and then it's like, for me, it's like, I can't believe it. You know, I met Sarge years ago at a, at a comic con, but then it's like, I'm on the phone with him. And, you know, my wife took a picture of me like talking on the phone with him and I got like this giddy smile on my face, you know, it's like, and then he's like, you know, it's time for action. You know, he's like asking me like what the action force tagline is and that sort of thing. And he's like really into it. Uh, you know, and he did a great video for me, uh, when we did the announcement and then we did Joe fest, uh, you know, last, uh, September, uh, together. That was fantastic. And I see like, he's all over Twitter. He's always plugging action force. So he's, he's been a great partner to work with. He's, he's really into it. No, that's, that's awesome. And there's a lot of people in the comments here, uh, showing a lot of love for this particular action figure. So we've got Chris Miwa from chasing Eddie's toys and this figure looks so good. Thanks. Chris. Um, uh, Judenator, Sergeant Sorter looks really great. And then my buddy George Aitken says, uh, that chin would put Judge Dredd to shame. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it's it's very realistic to the to the real guy, you know. Um, yeah, and the I got a great compliment from Sarge's daughter. Uh she had told Sarge she when she saw this, she said, That's the most realistic looking figure that anyone has ever done of you. And I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty great that, that someone would say that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Bart's asking if we're if there's any chance we're going to get a sleeveless Sarge repaint. <laughs> uh, Bart Bart's another one like Judd. He likes ribbing me with, with these. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we. Uh, I mean, the this is the figure that's going to be out right now. I, I may have another one playing down the road. But if you wanted that sleeveless look, the you can take his jacket off and then sort of swap torsos with the Karak figure who has bare arms and the tank top also. So then you can get that yep. sort of that, that eighties vintage Sarge look. And, uh, and how do you swap the torso? Are you actually able to, to like, disconnect them at the waist? Yeah, so, so at the waist, uh, you could pop it off at the waist. So it's basically oh, like cool. if the character wanted to change pants, uh, there's, there's an easy swap like that. Um, now, since the figures have butterfly joints, getting the, the, the arm out of that joint, uh, if you're not a seasoned customizer, could damage your figure. So I don't like to advertise that the arms are removable because that's kind of one of those things where you really have to know what you're doing to get it out. And I don't want to, I don't want people to try and damage their figure. So I just tell people you can swap the whole entire torso. So if yeah. you want different arms, if you wanted the bare arms, just get the Karak figure and swap the torso uh, with the Karak figure. Yeah. So, um, so obviously in, in this chat, like I recognize a lot of the YouTube handles, people who watch my channel, and then a lot of the comments I've shared of names I don't recognize, you seem to recognize. So I don't yeah. know, I don't know if this is another one of your uh, your supporters, but we've got here Master Horder says I really want the A10 Warthog vehicle. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> I don't I don't know him, and this, this that's the first time I've gotten that one. That would be uh, that that's a big vehicle. That's a really yes. Good <laughs> yeah, let's um start with something smaller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, something else I I I think would be really really good for you to kind of talk to talk the audience through is uh, all right, you know, so you uh you you're a designer, you worked at Hasbro, you're now sort of making this new Action Force line, but you're also a genuine enthusiast of these toys, aren't you? You are a GI Joe slash action force collector and have been for some time. So let's, tell me a bit about how you got into that. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is, you can see behind me this, that's only a portion like this. So this room that I'm in, it's just, it's my office now. But before that, when I was at Hasbro, this is my Joe room. 
when I bought, when, when we were shopping for houses, my wife would joke like, Oh, there's no Joe room in this house. We can't get this house. I needed a house that would house my GI Joe collection. Cause I have every yeah. figure from 80, 82 to 94, everything from 07 to now prototypes, vehicles. I got a flag, I got a Terradrome statues, you name it. And then I got, you know, all my international figures. So I've, you know, I, to me, GI Joe was my all time favorite toy line growing up as a, as a kid. I was, uh, it was my love as a kid. I got out of it as older, got back into it, then got out of it. But it's like, nah, then I don't know, maybe she's seven, eight years ago. I decided I want to go and I want to complete my collection. I want to get everything I'm missing. And that's when it got kind of crazy and just exploded. Um, but you know, it's like, I got to refigure. I had to have every, all the variations. Then I had to have, you know, I got a couple vehicles Well, now I got to have every vehicle. And, you know, it just, it just became that. So to me, GI Joe was, was always it for me, but for action force, because growing up in the United States, we didn't have action force. I didn't find out about action force. I think until I was about in my mid twenties. And I found out because I went to a toy show and I saw a red laser figure and I was like, what is that? What is that? A custom? And then he's like, no, that's, that's action force. And I was like, well, what's action force. And that's when like, you know, this whole door opened for me. And then I immediately got online. I was looking at stuff and I think maybe I was, I was younger. Maybe I was in my early twenties. Cause that was when, you know, I, I got into like yojo.com and was able to like look at everything. And I, I found what, what action force was. And I was like, well, this is amazing because these are great characters and they're all new characters. And at first I just learned of them as the later series using the Joe bodies. So there were still great characters there, repaints and that sort of thing that weren't cheaply made like fun school stuff. Cause I'd seen some fun school stuff and I'm like, wow, these are, these are kind of garbage. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. very poorly made, <laughs> but the, the action force stuff was so well made. And at that point that was because it was kind of Hasbro overseeing it. You know, the, the, the Palatoy end when they were doing using the Joe bodies. But then it, it was later on that I, I learned that, wait, there was this whole history of this, this line before the Joe bodies were used, these great five-point articulated figures that were awesome, great vehicles, great characters, great accessories. Uh, the paint was awesome. So I was like, wow, this is, this is great that, you know, and, you know, I think it turns some people off that, you know, you have the, the mix of five-point figures and, and Joe figures, but that never bothered me because as a kid, you know, my Star Wars guys played with my G.I. Joe, so that was fine for me. Um, I just saw like what great vehicles and, and to me like play sets were big. So you had the the cardboard headquarters, which was awesome because I had seen pictures of the Palatoy Death Star and that thing was like a myth to me. So then when I saw the the Action Force one, I was like, well, they did that one too. That's so cool. And then I saw that they repainted the, the G.I. Joe headquarters and it was this awesome green and black camo. I was like, well, that's awesome too. And it just seemed like they took everything that Joe was doing where it was like, okay, you're doing it good. We're going to do it good too. And it was just this nice version, but it was like also one of these unattainable things for me. Cause like I said, in the, in the States, you don't, you don't really see it. So then it's like, you get on eBay and you know, back then when I was in my twenties, like eBay wasn't as super popular as it is now. So things were, were few and far between. And when they came on, they were, they were expensive. So I've spent now the, the later uh, part of my life now, trying to fill those gaps of, of action force stuff. So I have all the, the Joe bodies. Now I'm trying to get all the, the original Palatoy stuff from um, 83 and 84 just to, cause I want a, a complete collection of the whole uh, Palatoy line. So that's what I'm working on now. But yeah. yeah, that's, I mean, collecting, I'm a, I'm a collector as much as I am, you know, a designer. So this, this, I live for this stuff. Yeah. And there's a, uh, there's a, there's a comment here from from Scuba Pete. He says uh, to see the passion on your face, Bobby. It's uh, something that you can't fake, isn't it? I, you, 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 I, you know, I, I love coming on podcasts and, and talking to like minded people about this stuff. Like, you know, you, you choose a profession that you love. And to me, like when I went back to school to be a toy designer and got the job at Hasbro, like that was a dream come true for me because that it's you know like that's what I was meant to do. Like, yes, I wanted to draw comics, but to just to work on toys and to be able to create something 
2D and then see it come in in plastic form. It's like, that's one of the coolest experiences ever. So for me now, like I got so many samples and saw so many things come to life when I was at Hasbro. Yet when I get my samples of my Action Force stuff, it's like, uh, it's like a whole new experience again. Um, so it's like that's that never gets old for me. So I love getting the samples of my own products coming in. Um, yeah, I, I, I absolutely love this stuff, man. I love doing this. I love having this job. I love working on this line. Uh, it really helps that it's a successful line and so many great things have happened uh, with it. And it's, it's really kind of, you know, I said earlier, like I was nervous about doing it. But when you see it kind of all pay off and you see the the that people are, are uh, enjoying what I'm doing and all the great, great feedback I'm getting, like that makes it like, you know, so much better for me because then that drives me to just do more. You know, I'm just like, I want this yeah. thing. I want to work on Action Force forever. I want to keep going. I want to do so much more. Yeah. I, uh, I Unfortunately for me, I discovered far too late in life that my real passion is making videos about toys in <laughs> hindsight maybe i should have gone to film school instead of just like going straight in the military from i didn't even finish high school i went in the military as soon as i could so uh we've got, we, uh, got another super yeah. chat here say again i said you're making great videos now <laughs> yeah but i should have been doing it a lot longer i think you know it's uh it's never too late no, it's never too late. It's never too late. Um, Epic Badger says more declassified accessories in the future. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, that was just kind of a one off. Um, I think, you know what it was? I, I was, it kind of, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way that they, they did that to the gung ho character. Um, you know, I, yes, I know that they, they've sort of come out and gave the excuse that, you know, he's he's not a Marine now. He's not written that way uh, on the website now. So this new classified gung-ho isn't labeled a Marine. But we all know his history is he's a Marine. So the fact that he came out, the figure came out, a Mar this Marine character came out with an Army issue cover, I saw that and I was like, well, that's just a huge miss right there. And that's just lazy designing. That's just, you know, not, not doing the research and that, that, you know, and, and just overlooking that. And that bothered me so much. I was like, something should be done about that. And I saw that the fans were very unhappy about that because it, it's, it's like blasphemy. It's like, it's like taking Darth Vader and giving him a blue lightsaber. It's just something <laughs> you don't do. Like you just don't it, do it. It's, it it makes his code name. It means makes no sense anymore. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. So I, yeah. I talked to my guy at the factory and I said, what are the odds we have room in one of the molds that I can put a hat in, you know, a, a proper Marine cover. And he goes, yeah, we could do that. How quickly can you get it sculpted up? I got it sculpted up like over the weekend, got, you know, it printed hard copies made, sent it out to him. I was like, let's put this in the mold. And you know, I was able to know kind of the, the size of the, the head that was correct in a way. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so then people were happy about getting that that cover because now they had a proper Marine cover for that figure. And then it kind of, you know, Big Bad Toy has been a great partner uh, to work with doing, you know, doing wholesale for me. And they were like, hey, we want to, you know, we want to do an exclusive. Is there any opportunity for that? So I gave them a couple options. Nothing really like, you know, got them, you know, knock their socks off. But then I was just thinking about it and I was like, maybe some of these parts will fit. And I was testing. I was like, well, here's this idea I have. And they loved it. And I said, there you go. Let's, let's do it. Um, <laughs> so that, you know, and then obviously calling it declassified was a, a funny little, little jab, but you know, <laughs> it's all good fun. Uh, but um, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I'm gonna put the focus on, on that sort of stuff. That's like a, a funny little one-off. But I'm, I'm I want to keep the focus on my action force. Uh, I mean, you know, hopefully Hasbro won't keep messing up, and I won't have to make items like that. But uh, you know, it's probably just gonna be a one-off for now. We got a uh, got another super chat here from Chris Johnson. <laughs> Thank you very much for the super chat. It says I need a fixer figure for Action Force Series Four. Let's make it happen. I want everyone to know that Chris is probably the world's biggest modern day Valiverse action uh, force fan. 
Chris has been a, a, a fantastic supporter. Uh, he's great to talk to. He's, you know, I chat with him in, on Facebook all the time. Um, he's funny. Can't wait to meet him at a, at a show one day. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Maybe down the road. Let's see what we can do. And uh, uh, what does he mean by fixer figure? Is this um... fixer? Is his kind of his? I guess his handle or his name on on you know social media. All right. Because yeah. also, um, fixer was the name of an unreleased prototype figure for the Action Force Special Weapons Team, which I did a video oh. about that maybe a year and a half ago. So they were going to come out with a with a fifth team, the Special Weapons Team I had. Um, Sort of some some futuristic weaponry. There was like a, a scientist type character in the line who was called Boffin, um, and and Fixer was one of those characters. I think it was Fixer, Lightning, Bombardier, and the Boffin scientist. So gotcha. I don't know if he, if Chris Johnson, if that's um, uh, he's, he's in the comments here saying you're making him blush. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if, <laughs> please correct me if I'm wrong, but I I'm, I was assuming that was a bit of a uh, a comment about um, the un one of the unreleased special weapons team guys. So oh, that's interesting. I'm gonna have to look into that that unreleased wave. Uh, and and Judson Oscar said, "No, yeah. Chris is Valiverse Action Force number one fan by far." <laughs> <clears throat> that's awesome. So um, so I know some people jump into these live chats. You know, they jump in a, li a little bit late. So. Um, uh, while while we're here, I'm just want to sh share the script. So this is um this is the home page for um for the for the Valiverse website. It's very very simple to to navigate to. It's just valiverse.com. Um, you you can go across there where you can uh you can pre-order a lot of the. Well, maybe maybe you want to talk through it, Bobby, rather than yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. So um this is actually the the new revamped site which just launched uh, a few weeks ago, which is great. Uh, the new design. I love the new design of the site. I got a great web guy doing the new site. So I'm very happy with the way this one came out. But yeah, I wanted it a little more user friendly and I wanted it, you know, I wanted you to be able to navigate through it and get to the to the areas where you need to if you want something. So if you want to pre order any of the figures right now, any of all of series one, there's on the top uh, right corner, you just hit pre order on the figures page, you could hit pre order. That'll bring you to the Crowdox site. That is the third party that I'm using to, you know, fulfill orders. So that's where you can go. And it shows you all the items that are available for series one. And it's, it's almost like pledging on a Kickstarter. Uh, Cause it's the kind of the same packages that were available on the Kickstarter. You kind of, you pick your package and then you, you know, you go to your add ons and you can add on additional figures or all the gear packs, weapons packs, that sort of thing. And then you can add to your order at any time. I have people constantly adding to their orders, which is great. Uh, so the pre-orders are still going to be open for a little while longer, but uh, I'll put up a, a good amount of updates before they close as we get closer to the, you know, the figure shipping from the factory. But um, yeah, so then, you know, the, the, the website has uh, areas where uh, you can read about the, the characters. If you go to uh, mission files uh, that, that has, um, or yeah, well, the, so the story, um, the story is basically kind of gives you an update on the, basically it's like the prologue of the whole story. And then yeah, admission files, you can go to each individual character and read. It basically has like their bio uh, for the characters. So you can go through all the, the, the characters that I have for series one in there. There's I've the got my favorite one up there on the screen. Now. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, the online store uh, has, uh, you know, some cool swag for sale. I got, you know, prints and t-shirts. That's where the comics will be for sale. Eventually that's where the figures will be as well. Um, there's an area to get in contact with me. Um, I'm the only one working at Valiver, so I'm always answering everyone's messages. Uh, so it's not, you know, there are times where I'll get messages from people I'll answer back. I'm like, wow, I didn't expect you to answer back. And I said, well, I'm the only guy, I'm the only guy working here. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but that's, you know, the, the site, uh, in a, in a nutshell, uh, Hopefully people dig the site and it's it's easy to go through. If you got any feedback, just let me know because you know I'm always looking to make things a little more user friendly and and you know add sections that that people want. Eventually, I want to get to the point where you know I think what what companies are missing is acknowledging like fan stuff. Like I want to be able to have a section for the fans where we get you know photography. Like there's so such great toy photographers out there. I want a place where everyone can share that photography on the site. 
So the, the site's going to evolve with the rest of the line as well. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that that'll be very cool. I've been able to share also photos, of maybe some people who are doing uh, custom versions of some of your figures yeah. and creating their own yeah. characters, and yeah, yeah that'll be very I, awesome. I have plans to do some contests uh, later on, like photography contests and customized contests for Action Force stuff, and that's what I'm really looking forward to because once the figures hit and people get their figures in hand, I can't wait to see what people do with them. Um, you know the. The, the amount of creative people out there and the possibilities are just, just crazy. So it's, it's going to be awesome to see the stuff that people come up with. So, um, Chris, so Chris has, has responded. He said he learned of the unreleased fixer by watching the analog toys video. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which I uh, – and on that video, I collaborated with, uh, with Chris McLeod from the, from the Full Force podcast as well. And I, I think we had some – uh, we had a bit of voiceover narration from from Bob Breakin himself at the end of that. Uh, that, was, that was some that was some time ago. I think that was only like the second Action Force video. The first Action Force video I ever made was the one about the Robo Skull because uh, mm. I didn't. Even though I had Action Force as a kid, um, my my, my collecting's been weird. I, I was Action Man. The, the twelve inch version, the British version of GI Joe was always my favorite toy and it is such an enormous toy line um that when i got into collecting i quickly realized i was like you know i can't collect anything else this is all i can collect so from 1993 to about 2010 all i collected was action man and then in the last 10 years i've now almost pretty much completed action force um, certainly the, the Palatoy era. There's a couple yeah. of little things missing, but um, Star Wars, Masters of the Universe. I love Rambo toys. Six million dollar man. It's, uh, it's it's amazing what I've accumulated in the last in the last ten years and all these different properties I'm getting into. So, well, you did you did a video of an item I worked on. You did that the 12 inch Legends Black Panther. That was one I worked on. Ah, really? Yeah, yeah. I, d I did that. Um, uh, so not many people got to got to see that. That's a um, I made that as a Patreon exclusive video to kind of start off uh, start off twenty twenty one. But that, that that was a cool figure, man. I I loved it. I just I just walked into a toy shop. I was on on uh, went down to see my family who was like a two hour plane flight away. They live in the in, in the big city. I'm I'm out in a small town, so I always go into the toy shops when I'm there. And uh, yeah, I saw this Black Panther there, and it was on on sale, and I was like, "That's just an awesome box," and you know, I, I like the character and everything. So um, yeah, I was very uh, very pleased to pick that one up. So, yeah, I, 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 I wish it I, I wish it lasted longer. Um, you know, we had some good stuff planned for that line, but that was a good one to work on. Yeah, what, so why didn't that line last longer? I, I was made an assumption that that scale just isn't as popular these days. So when we when we developed that that line, uh, we were, you know, Legends was very popular uh, at that time. That was like 2015, 2016. That's when like Legends was getting really hot. And we were like, well, what can we start branching out with with Legends? We didn't want to make Legends just the six inch figures. We wanted to make Legends this whole segment. So that's where we kind of came up with the idea to do the prop replicas, which I did all the, you know, the, the full one-to-one, -one, like Captain America shield, Iron Man helmet, that sort of stuff. And then at the same time, we looked at the, like the hot toys market and we were said, well, how can we kind of get some of those fans? And I thought that it was, it was a tough uh, nut to crack because, you know, hot toys fans, like those are two, three, $400 figures that people are willing to pay that. You don't want to make a watered down version of that. So when we originally pitched the 12 inch line, it was a much more premium line. Uh, it wasn't what, what the final product was. It was a closed box, like hot toys. It was very much like hot toys, some die cast pieces, just more, more pieces to it. Uh, some more soft goods. So it wasn't, it wasn't as expensive as hot toys, but it was, you know, close, close enough that people would say, Oh wow, that, that can kind of work. And then what happened was, you know, the markets were like, oh, we got to see the figure. We can't have closed boxes. And, you know, so we took the, the fifth panel off and it was a window box. And then, you know, oh, we wanted the price point down. Uh, you know, I think we originally, I think we started with a price point of like 75 and then it dropped down to 50. So then I was like, guys, listen, legends are 20, you know, 50. I was like, 
you know, people, I don't think people are going to get into this new, this new scale, this new segment, because they're going to want that $50 to spend on more six inch figures. And I said, the hot toys people aren't going to drop down and get this $50 figure because it's going to be a watered down version. And then when the line debuted, Amazon immediately debuted the line on clearance. And I don't remember if it was an error or not, but the line comes out and Amazon has it on clearance and then automatically people are like, Oh, it's on clearance already. It just came out. So it's not, they don't, it's not going to have any longevity. So I'm trying to be at conventions telling people, no, we have these plans. Like we're going to go pretty deep, like just, you know, stick with the line, that sort of thing. And luckily I was able to get out, you know, the big giant Hulk figure and some later, you know, some, some other figures Thor was, was great to get out there. The Deadpool, um, so we we tried. I just think we had a lot working against us, and I think, yeah. you know, there was some bad decision making. Um, but you know, we did what we could, and uh, you know, the team of us that that really had some love for it, you know, really made some some great product. Uh, you know, to me, that's like one of my favorite lines that I worked on, just because it was something I got to start from scratch. And also, Marvel was like, listen, these aren't going to be. 100% classic figures and they're not going to be movie figures. So kind of, if you want to put some sort of your own spin and your own detail on them, you can. So I got to design aspects of the characters that was sort of my twist on it. Uh, so that was really fun to do. Um, I, I love, I love that line. Um, you know, it would have been great if we could have done more, but you know, to, to get to the point where we got Wolverine out there and that Hulk, if you haven't held that Hulk figure, that Hulk weighs so much. It's such a massive figure. Um, it, it's pretty cool to to see it and be like, wow, we 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 did a good job with that figure. Yeah, hey, the um the the Hulk was my my favorite superhero growing up, mainly because I used to watch the Bill Bixby TV yep. show. Yep. Um, and I've actually I've got a, a one of my normal kind of analog toys live streams tomorrow night, and that's the patrons have voted, and that's the topic we're talking about. All Very things cool. incredible Hulk. Um, uh, you know, I, I would I would say in in the modern era, you know, my my favourite superhero definitely changed. But when I was a child, it was always about the Incredible Hulk. Gotcha. Uh, you, you were saying you you were involved in the Marvel Legends, <clears throat> excuse me, the the prop replicas. When I was just down in in Perth recently, um, <clears throat> I've made no secret um, on the channel as well. I've, I've often wanted to get one of the Captain America shields and. Uh, I've just not got around to it. And, um, you know, everything I buy here, I have to get shipped here. There aren't toy, yeah. uh, toy shops in my town. Um, but, yeah, like literally last week I, I was down in Perth and I went into uh, like, we've got this uh, chain of pop culture stores called Zing all over the place. And I went into Zing and they not only had the Captain America shield, they had Thor's hammer and they had Stormbreaker. Mm -hmm. And they had one of them out of the box where you could you know, like this thing is huge. And I, I was with my wife and I was like, I'm buying that Stormbreaker and taking it home. And then she very quickly reminded me that it would not even fit in the suitcase. I was like, <laughs> oh, damn. And I don't think she wants Stormbreaker hanging from the wall in the living room either. So I I passed on it. Uh, but no, that's a, that, that, that's, that's a really cool line. A lot of that uh, that one-to-one -one scale prop replica stuff, it's, it's become a real very popular over the last couple of years. Yeah, that was fun to work on because, you know, we work so closely with the guys at Marvel. They were able to get me the exact specs for Captain America's shield. So it's yep. the exact size of his shield in the movie. Uh, so, you know, that was fun. And then we did the plastic version and then we did the metal version of the shield. And then, yeah, Thor's hammer. Thor was my favorite here as superhero. So doing Thor's hammer was cool. And then I got to do both gauntlets. So the Infinity Gauntlet and the, the, the Iron Man Gauntlet. That was great to work on because even like Kevin Feige and the people at Marvel, they had such praise for the Infinity Gauntlet, and it you know they they had so many Twitter pictures of it, and that was just cool to do. Uh, so yeah, that one to one line uh, was was a, a real home run for us. Yeah, I've um I've I've only kind of dipped my toe into it slightly, and not with the Marvel stuff. It's um. Uh, a while ago, I, I saw um, so they've done obviously the range of, of the Black Series Star Wars helmets. Mm -hmm. uh, there was there was Luke Skywalker's X-wing helmet, and I saw it. Um, I'm sure, I saw it on eBay about about a year or so ago um, for around around fifty percent um, markdown. Oh, cool. 
Uh, I was like, oh, that's I, I, I'm not interested in getting anything from the Force Awakens or the sequel trilogy or all that, but because yeah. it was Luke Skywalker's one, I was like, damn, I've, I've got to get that. Uh, and then for Christmas, my wife got me the the one to one Stormtrooper helmet. From, Very cool. so, yeah, yeah I, which the uh, the microphone doesn't work great, but I don't care. I'm probably never yeah. going to use the microphone. I have the stormtrooper and the Darth Vader. The Darth Vader one's very cool. Yeah, yeah, I um, I've, I've I've been looking at that, and I've been looking at the Boba Fett one as well. But yeah, I ended up uh, I ended up having a few beers Christmas Day, getting a little bit drunk, and walking around the house with a stormtrooper <laughs> helmet on. It's it's not it's not uh, they're not ideally suited for drinking beer bottles. <laughs> I, I I can attest to that. Um. You know, because I had gotten my buddy the Darth Vader one, and uh, I remember being at his house trying to drink a beer with the Darth Vader one on, and I was like, "This doesn't work." <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look, we'll um, I think we'll, we'll we'll wrap it up in a few minutes. If there's anyone yeah. out there who's got any any more questions for for Bobby, uh, drop them into the chat, and we'll see if we can get a few more questions in. But um, I, uh, thanks so much for coming on the show, Bobby. I really appreciate it. It's always good to oh, have a chat. No, no, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, it, it's been my pleasure to come on. Like I said, this has been like, uh, you know, uh, on my bucket list for things to do. So this is, it's an honor for me to be on this show uh, with you. So thank you uh, for having me on. Um, I, I it, uh, I'm saying it, it won't be the one and only time. Uh, it awesome. Certainly won't. awesome. I hope not. I hope not. Um, I did. I did see uh, someone brought up a really good point, and, and I, I, I didn't mention it. Someone wanted me to talk about. Uh, we do have a a BotCon exclusive figure uh, mm -hmm. for the the guys from BotCon uh, reached out to me. They wanted to do an exclusive figure for the show this year, and uh, you know we teamed up and they created this this cool character called Wasp Raider. He's sort of a, an officer for the Swarm Troopers, and that figure is available uh, through the BotCon site for pre order right now. And then it'll be available uh, at the show for people that go to the show as well. So you don't have to go to the show to get the figure. Uh, you can you can pre-order it now, and it'll be available as part of Series One. And I think their their show is sometime in June, I, I, I believe. Uh, but you know, just check out the Botcon site uh, for more information on that. But uh, the Wasp Raider figure is available right now, and he'll be part of Series One. So you, you're going to want to get that figure because he's he's really cool. That 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 name is cool alone, the Wasparator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like that. It's a nice little twist on a, on an existing transformer. Um, yeah. But it's, it's it's cool. The idea that they they had for it is is very cool. Something I wouldn't have thought of. Um, but those guys are you know obviously huge Transformers fans. Yeah, yeah. So and um, when um uh, and when can you announce like when your pre orders are going to be ready to to ship roughly? Do you know or? Yeah, so uh, I'm in constant contact with the factory. Uh, we're deep into production right now. I'm supposed to get uh, a good amount of samples uh, this month uh, before Chinese New Year happens. Uh, Chinese New Year lasts for about two weeks in China. And it's about the the end of January into you know mid February, so they shut down. So there's going to be you know uh, nothing really happening during that that point. But then they're going to get back, and then we're going to go harder into production. As of right now. I believe we're still on track to ship in the spring, to ship from the factory in the spring. Uh, I don't have an exact date. As soon as I get that, um, I'll let everyone know. Uh, I'm, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that, you know, we don't hit any delays, but, you know, we're still definitely feeling the effects of obviously the pandemic, you know, and the factory's working on many other figure lines uh, for other companies. So, you know, they're trying to move as fast as they can to get, you know, everyone uh, back up to speed. Uh, so, you know, as soon as I know something, if there, if there, if we encounter any delays and as soon as I know about, it, I'll make sure to let people know, uh, so that they could be aware of it. As of right now, we don't have any concrete, uh, updates on that as of right now. Um, so we're just, we're moving forward as we are, but as soon as, you know, as it gets closer, like I've been keeping everyone in loop with everything as it is. So listen, yeah. as soon as it ships from the, the factory, I'm going to put a tracker up on the website so we can see where the boat is as it's coming, <laughs> uh, as it gets to California. I want to be able to track it so that we know when it gets from California all the way across the United States to Rhode Island to my office to be able to, to get all the product in. So everyone's going to be involved uh, every step of the way. So constant, constant updates uh, so that, you know, no one's, uh, you know, sort of left in the dark about it. But, you know. Uh, updates are coming stuff's coming samples are coming it's going to get real exciting really fast awesome 
Awesome. So we've got a, we've got a question here from Sontaran Bile. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, I would like the original Action Force figures based off Action Man. So I know we had a bit of a chat about this. If you talk about the um, the first, so the, the, like the video I, just, I released recently, the 1982 wave, yep. they're not they're not characters. It's you know the German stormtrooper, yep. all, all, all that kind of thing. So you know that's uh, there's no copyright issues there, but I'm sure you want to possibly keep some some cards close to your chest there, Bobby. If you yeah, if you're yeah. Up and yeah. stuff. I think, um, you know I, I've I've got plans for stuff. Uh, you know, there, there might be something you see in the future that you can say, okay, well, that's not exactly this, but it's kind of a throwback to that. Uh, there's yeah. going to be, you know, a, a bit of that, uh, that, that you'll see in the line because listen, uh, action force has this history uh, that I don't ever want people to forget. And I also want to make sure that I want people to know that this line only exists because of the original action force. So you know, I want to make sure that I am doing the original justice by, you know, by having this new line live on and, you know, uh, you know, paying that respect to Bob and the guys that worked on that line and, and what came before. So it's, it's very important for me to, to, to keep that legacy alive, but it also keeping the name alive and creating something new with it. Yeah. Cool. And we've got, uh, we've got Bart here is asking, um, is a builder figure a possibility? Uh, I don't really have any like giant ogre type characters that would warrant a builder figure, <laughs> but you never know. You never know. I mean, uh, you know, I do like the idea of like deluxe figures. Like, I do love that the Legends team now is sort of taking builder figures and offering them as like deluxe figures. Uh, so I do like that because when I think about it, it's like, okay, well one day down the line, I want to do a halo jumper. And it's like, well, he's obviously got to come with a parachute, but then that's more of a deluxe figure, you know? Um, so maybe not build a figures, but deluxe figures down the line, uh, you know, a, a more, uh, you know, same scale figure, but more gear, uh, more stuff that comes with it. Uh, yeah. is a, def a definite possibility. Here's, here's my thoughts on build a figures, Bobby. And, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to give you advice. I'm just telling you what, what, what my thoughts are. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned deluxe figures because, you know, if there is, uh, whether it be a larger character or, or a character like a Halo, who sound, that sounds awesome, a mm -hmm. Halo parachutist with all this extra gear, I would rather stump up the money for a deluxe figure. To me, builder figures, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a marketing gimmick to get people yeah. to buy it entirely. Like, I, I was very interested in getting uh, – I don't collect any Marvel Legends. The, um, the only one I have now is, is Black Panther, which is obviously that, that, that different scale. I was very keen on, on getting this, the set of the Avengers from Endgame with the Thanos builder figure. Yeah. The problem was to complete that set, um, I can't remember what they called um, so pe when Pepper Potts is in the Iron Man suit. Oh, uh, rescue. Re res rescue. Mm -hmm. I had no interest in that figure, but one part of Thanos came with that, and I'm like, no, nah, yeah. that's just put me off the whole thing. I wanted all the other characters except that one, but I can't complete Thanos without, without that, and I was like, nah. Mark, it's a marketing gimmick. Just yeah. Like, it, just it's, sell us Thanos. <laughs> it's kind of one of those things where – when I was working on, on legends and I did a couple Spider-Man build a figure waves, you know, we would kind of joke like, okay, well, who's going to be the peg warmer? You know, you, when you design the figures, you definitely don't want there to be a peg warmer. You don't, you know, well, you, you know that some figures are always going to outsell the others, but you try really hard to put compelling figures in the waves that people are going to want. And, but there's always going to be a situation where yes, someone isn't going to want all those figures. Um, you know, and it's, it's, you know, working on, it, it's like, I, I thought it was a, a great marketing gimmick and I can, I can see the, the, you know, the collectability for it. But, you know, to me, it's like, I was a fan of, of legends because I worked on it, but I, I want, I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, well, if I didn't work at Hasbro, would I be a legends fan and would I be buying all these waves? And I, I've never been able to answer that, that question because I'm kind of jaded and, and, you know, uh, be, you know, working there and seeing the way it all goes down. But yeah, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a marketing ploy. What I, what I didn't like that they did was they started offering 
uh, like build a figures as like like Comic Con figures as build a figures, or they started kind of taking the the novelty away from it because they offered that figure again in like a two pack or something like that. Like you had the Juggernaut build a figure, and then you had Juggernaut with Colossus in a two pack, but then they gave him a new head and a new color scheme. So it's like it made you and, and you're like, well, wait a second, I just bought six figures to make this Juggernaut. Now you're giving me this version over here. It's like it's kind of it's kind of di a, a dirty move. Um, you know, when I'm designing my my waves of, of figures and the characters, I look at it like, well, I know there's going to be more popular figures, but I design every figure to be really compelling. And I hope that every figure sells evenly with, with everyone else, even though that's that's not, you know, going to happen. But that's the way I, I design uh, the characters. Yeah. All right, so uh, we'll do one last question here from Scuba Pete, who asks, um, any thoughts of, um, of, of of doing any dogs or animals for the line in, in the same vein as sort of uh, Mutton Junkyard and, and Snake and, and uh, Snake Eyes and Timber? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know, I have three dogs, so uh, I definitely would like to put a dog in the line. I recently got the... I recently got into a few Mezco figures and I got the Mezco John Wick figure and he comes with the, the pit bull and two of my dogs are pit bulls. So, you know, uh, I've seen other companies do dogs and like they, they've done it really well. So I'm like, oh, someone's got to have a dog. And I, I obviously if I do a dog, I'm going to do a pit bull like one of my dogs. <laughs> so it's just a matter of who's going to be the character that comes with the dog uh, and how many uses can I get out of that dog? And, you know, cause you also, when you do something that's going to be costly, like mold for a dog, you want to be able to get a lot of uses out of it. So like Marauders, they made dog parts and they've done like five or six different dogs. Uh, so I want to be able to maybe do a dog and then be able to take kind of the, the head area off and make different breeds uh, with that dog. So we'll see. It's definitely on my radar and it's something I want to do. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, um, just before we shoot off, I know I've kind of I've, I've plugged your website a, a couple of times, but I'm going to do it again. So um, you can check out all this awesome new Action Force product over at Valiverse.com. Uh, but why don't you tell everyone where else they can uh, can find you? you obviously, what, what social media platforms yeah, are you on? So, uh, I'm all over Facebook. Uh, if you just search Valiverse or um, uh, at the Valiverse, uh, well, anything will come up. If you search Valiverse, you'll, you'll see the, the Valiverse page. There's also a really great fan page called Legions of Valiverse. So if you come and follow the Valiverse page, make sure you join the Legions group because th those guys are, are the really hardcore fans. Uh, Chris is in there leading the charge, but that's, that's a great group. Um, you know, it, it really shows the, 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 the loyalty and, and the greatness uh, of the fans that I have. Uh, I'm on Instagram, same thing. Just look up Valiverse on Instagram, and you'll you'll find my page on there, Valiverse.com. And those are based on the YouTube channel, the Valiverse YouTube channel. I'm trying to get more content up there. Uh, I do the live streams when I get samples in. I want everyone to see the unboxing of that stuff and experience that with me. So uh, with more samples that come in, you'll get more uh, content on the YouTube page. Almost at 1,000 subscribers, which is really cool. Awesome. Uh, so that's where I'm at with all social media. I'm I, I respond pretty much to everything. So send me a message and I'll, I'll always get back to you. You can shoot a message on, on the, the website. Uh, if you go on the Valiverse website, make sure you uh, join the mailing list because, you know, when I send out updates, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, a lot of people who aren't on social media, uh, you know, get the updates uh, that I send out as well. And I'll do that through the, the email list with that. So. Um, that's pretty much all of it. I want to thank everyone that, that came and, and listened to the show and came with your questions. You guys are awesome. I've said from the start, I've had the, the best fans, the, the fans are, you know, for me, it's like doing this for me has been great, but to be able to do this for all of you guys is, is awesome. And, you know, the, the, the feedback that I get and the love that you guys have for this line is the motivation for me to keep doing it more. So keep it coming. Thank you guys for being so loyal and being great fans. Thank you again, Tony, for having me on. This has been awesome. It's, it's been an, abs an absolute pleasure. And I, I'm just going to leave the audience with this one last comment. If you haven't checked out the Valiverse YouTube channel, you have to go and look at the uh, office room tour. I watched that <laughs> yeah. video 
a few days ago and and it, and it's incredible but no bobby it's been an absolute pleasure having you on it's definitely not going to be the last time uh we'll uh, i'd love to have you on it on again um anytime, anytime. yeah so um yeah I agree with everything Bobby says there. Same with with uh, with the supporters of my channel. You guys are fantastic. Really appreciate you you all tuning in. Um, uh, some great questions. I think we've really enjoyed the chat. And um, don't forget, get your pre orders in at valiverse dot com. Excellent. Cool. Thank you, guys. All right. We'll say goodbye. Cheers. Thanks very much, Bobby. See you guys. Cheers, everyone.